This is Duke University. In the wake of modernity and globalization, older traditions have either faded away or are being transformed world over. This is not a new topic for this particular culture, this particular region. What is uh, unique, I think, about this particular topic that um, I felt also uh, a little bit uh, kind of drawn to, uh, I am a native of this region. I am a Gujarati. I am from Gujarat. And I, I, I am pretty much part of this culture, having danced these forms all my life uh, as I was growing up. But it never occurred to me because knowing that these forms are so deeply instilled in the culture, in everyday events, uh, we used to dance the Garba, everyday events, birth of a child Garba, uh, marriage, wedding ceremony, uh, housewarming, any, any special event we used to, the whole family would get together over a Garba event. Uh, and now I don't see that at all. In not, not at all in the, in the cities. Um, and it is basically limited to a Navaratri festival. However, you will see a few shots that I will be able to show how modernized and how discoized these forms have become. And that is pretty much what really drawn, uh, drew me to going deeper into the inner, inner parts of, of uh, Gujarat to find some of the older traditions. So the film is um, basically an archival project. It is not necessarily made with an idea to make it like a, 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 a proper documentary film. It's, it's a documentation of something that I assume will, over a period of time, not be alive anymore. It will transform, but not the, the, the aesthetic with which that these older traditions have enriched and evolved. I see that that aesthetic is getting lost. And that was pretty much a, a, a point where, where I started with. जगदंबा तू जो गणी में जपिए तिहारो जाप ए वाया खंड रे मारी तारा दीवा जड़े अरे रे तू तो परगाट छे आपो याप आड़ी तारा बेसना गाड़गीर नारा नवे खंड नजरू फरेरे लोले अम्बे मागर बेराम वायाओ साहेली सूटोले मलेरे लो Garba is the traditional dance of Gujarat in Western India. It is performed at most celebratory social occasions such as weddings, women's vows, women's ritual worship, and most particularly during the Autumn Navaratri festival. Navaratri is a festival of nine nights eulogizing and celebrating the nine forms of Shakti, the Divine Mother. Of the four Navaratris in a year, the Autumn Navaratri is most popularly celebrated during the bright fortnight of the lunar month of Ashvin. Each night of this festival, Gurba is performed as a celebrative dance and as a communal form of Shakti worship. The dance has acquired a rich religious, social, and cultural heritage in Gujarat and elsewhere where immigrant Gujaratis have settled. Ambaji Temple at Arasur is one of the most venerated Shakti temples in Gujarat. During Navaratri, hundreds of thousands of people visit Ambaji and dance the Garba in the temple square, 
with aspirations of seeking the blessings of goddess Umbika. The Navaratri festival is celebrated in diverse ways by diverse communities, Shakti worship being the common thread connecting them all. Ahir women ceremoniously make clay images of Krishna and his foster mother Yashoda amidst songs and praise of the Divine Child. મારે ઘરે માથા માથ લઈ જાઉં પછી મારે ભગવાન દીકરો આપે તો એ દે જ છે ને જ્યાં લઈ જતા અહીંયા પણ એ કે આ રજા જ બન્યો આજ મારો ઘર The processional ceremony culminates in the celebratory garba performed by Ahir women in the temple square. It is a fantastic, awe-inspiring sight when the women with the lighted structures numbering over 100 line up in a procession leading to the goddess temple in the early hours of the morning of the full moon.
Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, if you have any questions, I can. We have a few minutes, so. When these dances were done in the family, would they hire people to do it or would the family themselves perform the Family them? themselves would do it. It w Earlier it was just a family gathering, performing and singing, which is what if one example, that was only one example that was available to me. But later on over the years, some of the movements became a little more choreographic. And so that's when they stopped singing themselves and they would hire singers. Earlier, the focus was more on the poetry, on the eulogies. Um, and the drumming was always powerful, but the focus was more on the song part of it, the sung literary text. Eventually, then the importance of the choreographic movement became more prominent. Thank you, Murmina. It's, it's a, an amazing uh, work of not only hard, but a great work of intellectual and aesthetic uh, uh, of power. Thank right? you. And, and a collaborative project also. We saw names of all the faculty mm -hmm. doing the camera and things like that. Beautiful. Uh, but my question is about, I, I didn't see, and it's my own ignorance, uh, uh, but then trying to connect to Latin America, that is my mm -hmm. area mm -hmm. also. Uh, uh, I didn't see uh, uh, dances in which men and women are involved with 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 regards of of course the disco garba of course right. so there men and men. women dance together which is a very very modern thing yeah but not in, in not in the traditional mm -hmm. garba right it's, no it's women danced with women men danced with men exactly yeah. and but also is this interesting and in rural areas it continues that way exactly it and it's interesting that even yeah. the people coming from you know the yeah. u.s yeah they go and they speak about us yeah. dancing yeah. and but actually it's her <laughs> dance with <laughs> the big thing in her head right it's right the gender issues yeah there. in in rural areas i did not see any event where men and women dance together exactly and just from a technical standpoint point of view uh it's a very well done film. Thank a you. Very well done film. I mean, aesthetically, it's just very pleasant and beautiful. A uh, lot of work. <laughs> and a lot of work and many years, uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, it's very interesting the, the, um, the way the documentation of the dances take place, right? It's a camera that is on the level of the dancers mm -hmm. and a mm -hmm. camera that goes up to try mm -hmm. to show the mm -hmm. figures. Mm -hmm. Could you tell us a little bit of the decisions? Mm -hmm. Because you are a dancer, mm -hmm. you know how. To teach dance, you have to <laughs> distance yourself. But how, you know, the, some of the technical decisions. Yeah, doing we, it, was, it was not easy. I did go around looking at locations, which was very, very difficult because there were, there were several festival um, locations that were beautiful to be there physically, but to film them was impossible because we would not have any vantage point to film. Um, Either, I, you know, we did not have a vantage point, sort of an aerial point to cover a larger audience, as well as the performing area, the interaction, or sometimes the lighting was so difficult that it was not easy. So what you see is also a very selected part of what I had originally uh, filmed. Um, these were eventually selected precisely because we had a vantage point to be able to, like the temple part. We, we filmed the actual um, uh, village squares where the, the seven-tiered dancers were dancing. And then we ran a marathon race with camera and everything to the temple before the, before the, the procession entered there. And we somehow requested and begged to be able to go up to the terrace. And it, even the terrace, there were trees and everything sort of coming in the way. So a camera person literally got down into that, I don't know what you call that, lentil out, down from the parapet. And I held on to his shirt and back <laughs> while he was filming. I was afraid that he would not fall off from there. <laughs> so I held on to him this way and he was filming the, the procession coming into the temple. So they were very, very adventurous sort of, uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. 
I studied Katak dancing, and I didn't see any of that. Is, does that not happen in that region? Um, Kathak is a classical form. It's more like courtly. It used to be performed in the temples, but it is not necessarily uh, associated with goddess worship or with it. It is, it is more like um, a storytelling. It is sort of performed as part of the temple mm, ceremonies. Uh, this is a very different topic. Um, this relates particularly to a Navratri festival, which is specifically uh, eulogizing the, the nine forms of the goddess. All of this, all of this shooting is done within the, the Navaratri festival time period. So that also was very difficult to coordinate interviews, running, traveling to different places, and uh, shooting all night, because the performances would start at 11 or, or midnight, go up to 5 in the morning, and then we would get a couple hours to just kind of upload all our recorded material onto our hard drive and then probably get a couple hours of sleep or even shower or something, <laughs> rush to the next village, interview people, and then, you know, shoot at night. And it was, it was a very, very hectic schedule. <laughs> I even at one point forgot whether it was day, night, whatever. It was just go, go, go. <laughs> Are the costumes very dance specific? Uh, earlier, a, a lot of the costumes were identified by the tribe it, or by the cultural sort of um, group they belong to. Over time, what has happened is that now women are wearing more uh, urban style saris. And so when they, particularly for Navratri, they will either bring out their special clothing for Navratri or they'll hire clothes or rent clothes, uh, which is funny. But uh, yes, that is this. I, I asked them, I said, why don't, you, why do I see everybody dressed in the same clothing? And they said that nowadays they would not dance with their own, you know, street clothes. They, they have to be uniform. They want to all look like they're, they're sort of performing, but which is not a performance. It is a communal gathering, celebrating the, as part of the festival. But they nowadays, they all want to go out and have, it's that they made a, they make a decision what color they will wear this year, what color they will wear next year, what kind of embroidery they will have this year, what kind of embroidery they'll have next year. So th this is a very well planned. Uh, yes. So how yeah. do you have a, oh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. OK. What, what Yes, I have the question regarding the, the last dance where all these women had the uh, uh, triangle years. set uh -huh. structure. The, um, since the women who had boys were doing that dance, mm -hmm. does it mean that every household did their structure or, or, or does it go to a you know, place and all of them did uh, because some of them had more lights than others? And yes, earlier these structures were made from cane and um, they were cane structures, and there were 108 lamps in a pyramidical shape. And pyramidical shape also has a very religious scientific meaning to it. Um, in between, in the central line, then again, they would have that carved copper pot in which there's also one central light. That's a permanent feature. And uh, uh, what I heard from the villagers saying that the cane was then offered into the temple, and then it had to be, yeah, it had to be then. You couldn't reuse it at earlier in the earlier times, but that became too expensive. So eventually, they had some other structures, and then eventually, the, it evolved into an aluminum structure, which now they preserve and reuse every year. Uh, they use aluminum because only because it would not be too heavy. If it would be any other metal, it would become too heavy. But the lighted uh, lamps are actual, like made from cotton wick, and when they are dancing, they are all drenched with the hot, burning hot oil. And I asked a couple of the dancers, I said, do you even feel the heat? And they say, I don't even know I have oil on me. Um, they are sort of in that state, a uh, devotional state. It doesn't, it doesn't really, and they don't feel the burns on their skin either. So they consider that to be like the goddess's 
the goddess's um, blessing. Uh, they say we'll never burn. It's, it's, it's a dance that it doesn't matter how much oil kind of drips on us. Um, we'll never burn. It, that, that's their faith. I'm just wondering how you and your family are going to celebrate Navratri this year. How will you and your family celebrate Navratri? Well, earlier we used to, uh, what, what used to happen earlier in the, in when I was a child is that wherever residential sort of um, families would get together and we would have a central square somewhere, or if not, we would just do on the street. And traffic was shut off. There was no traffic after 11 p.m. You couldn't drive a car. You could pass on if you wanted to walk through, but not not drive. Uh, various different residential centers would have these squares or just use the entire street. And then the, the whole circle would go all around, all around the whole residential, depending on how big it was. And it was very celebratory. People would bring lots of food, and there would be lights, and there would be diyas, the, the lamps, and those structures, and all kinds of things. So it was, it was a very um, I wouldn't say it was very well planned, but it just happened when the community got together, things happened. Uh, women would sing. Uh, sometimes it also happened that women on the north side would sing something else. The women on the south side were too far away, couldn't hear what they were singing. They would sing their own things, right? So there were two different Garba songs being sung on the north end and the south end, and somehow it merged or blended somewhere in the circle. So this is what I have seen growing up. Um, this is not happening anymore. Uh, yeah, it, Navratri is next month in October. And now, generally in the cities, what you see is in the clubs. And you know, people go to the clubs, what you saw right now with strobe lights and all of that kind of uh, fancy stuff. But you don't see community dancing in, in cities anymore. It happens only in very, very small outskirt areas or, or in clubs. And their older generation women will never go because they, they are completely like um, petrified actually <laughs> with what's going on. They do not approve of what's going on. Thank you, that was very interesting. Um, a very quick question about origins of the form mm -hmm. um, and a certain level of curiosity as to how this cuts across caste structure. Mm -hmm. Is it that it comes from a folk tradition? Was it typically the erstwhile lower caste that gets appropriated? Right. Or is it that there's a distinction? I, uh, the origins are very, very difficult to, to find, uh, to even study and research because it is an oral tradition. Mm -hmm. But from my study and from my discussion with several of the scholars, there is a belief that it, it, it originated in the tantric uh, religion, tantric sect of, of Hinduism. And uh, the Shakti, basically the worship of Shakti, uh, associated with its tantric uh, conceptualization, then eventually manifested into this whole Garba, manifesting the, the Shakti within the circle. Uh, so it has it, its origin in, in Tantrism, which is what scholars believe. Um, and eventually, you know, when larger communities or, or migrations happened, then there were more blending of, of um, other elements into it. But the origins are deeply rooted in Tantrism. And about caste structure? Caste structure earlier, um, uh, at least from, from today's point of view, uh, in several of the villages, I saw that um, in the early part of the of the evening uh, in Navratri, each caste would perform within their own square. Because right now in villages, ca caste people live like blacksmith caste lives here, carpenters live here. You know people working with leather will yeah. live here, right? So they will all perform in their own squares. And then eventually, like at 3 a.m. when it is time to take all of the, all, off, do all the offerings in, into the temple, that's when they gather into the central square. Everybody gathers into the central square. They perform there for a couple hours, and then everybody goes to the temple at 5 in the morning to offer their prayers. That's Five in the morning <laughs> is like the dawn time, which is the most auspicious time for prayer. 
one last question. Uh, are the rhythms specific to Garba? Are there any specific rhythms that they use? Yes. Yes. Um, a lot of these rhythms that you saw here are very, very specific to Garba. Yes. Yes. There is a range of rhythms, but, but um, yes, there are Garba. Okay, we have one I did last not question. show one, one um, piece here, which is like a Sanskrit professor came up with um, a, um, a passage from Sri Sukta, which is eulogy to the goddess Lakshmi. And so he took a, a Sanskrit passage from Sri Sukta and uh, composed it in a Garba rhythm. And his daughter choreographed it to a Garba movement using, using those rhythms. I did not show that, but it's, it's recorded here. Yeah. Thank you so much. It was such an interesting uh, film. Thank you. Um, I'm wondering about the, the contrast between recorded and live music. When mm -hmm. we saw the dancing, there were live musicians there. Uh -huh. when we, in the nighttime performances, we didn't see the music, we heard it. Is that recorded music? And no, how nobody is doing recorded. No, they are all live, live okay. orchestras sitting somewhere at a at a particular Just location, which we could not really focus loud on. Loud enough that everyone. But can they hear. were all live music. Okay, thank all you very much. Thank you very much, everyone, for uh, joining us. Thank you, Pumina. Produced by Duke University. Online at duke.edu.